Okay. Um, in this video, I want to show you how to install PyRabbit using the new PyRabbit installer. Um, today, I published the PyRabbit 4.4 that has added an option to the installer that you can install the PyRabbit for the current user only or for all users that are using that machine. So let's look at um, where to get the PyRabbit installer and how to, how to install PyRabbit on your machine. Um, you want to go to the Pirate blog or the Pirate uh, GitHub repository. Um, if you don't have the link saved, you can always search for Pirate, and um, you're gonna get um, results that show the um, Pirate repository on GitHub, which is going to be this. Or um, I'm actually gonna go to another. Or you can go to the Pirate blog. This is the place that I, you know, post everything about new updates and stuff like that. Um, there is a link to this blog from this repository, which is here. If you click on this one, it also takes you to the blog. Um, to download it, click on the download installer, and you get the new installer downloaded on your machine. I've already done that here, which is the new, actually, the new installer that I have. Okay. So this is a setup file that you get if you download that file from the from the blog. Um, double click on it, run it, or just make sure that you use it. Uh, you run it as an administrator. Um, say yes. You run this. Welcome to Pirate and setup. Next, accept the license agreement. Obviously, you have to read through this. Um, it's an open source GNU standard uh, version three uh, license. And then next, and this is the new new interface that asks you about the, um, the where how do you want to install Pirate? Do you want to install it for the current user only, or do you want to install it for all users? The difference is that um, so I'm going to say on the for the all users, and I'm going to say next. So this is the place that the Pirate repository will get installed. So if you say browse, and then I'm going to drive, install it on drive C. Um, so this is the place that I'm going to install my Pirate on. Um, it doesn't matter which option you pick here, this destination is always the same. The difference is where this installer places the, um, the add-in definition files that tell Revit where to load, where to load, where to find Pirate basically and load it. So there are two different places that you can, um, you can place these definition files and I'll show you both of them. The first one is in program data folder. This is for all users, basically. Um, all users, it's going to be program data. For current user only, the folder is going to be app data. And this is also where Pyrabit saves its configuration for the current user that's running and using Pyrabit. So let's, let's look at both of these locations. Um, if I copy this into a browser, into an explorer oh. and hit enter. It takes you to this address. It's C program data on my machine. On your machine might be different. So, but this is a sort of like a smart tag that it always takes you to the right, uh, right folder. Um, program data, Autodesk, Revit, and add-ins. For each one of the Revit versions that's installed on the machine, you have a folder that defines all these standard add-ins that are um, used for. Um, let me actually delete these so they don't show up. That are standard for Pir for for Revit, like for Revit 2017. Dynamo add-in has been added here, and this is a file. This is a text file that basically tells Revit where to find the DLL assembly for um, that add-in to be loaded at Revit startup. Um, same thing happens for PyRevit. So PyRevit will add the, its add-in definition file files in these folders, basically. This folder, obviously, the program data folder lives on your local drive where the operating system lives on, and this folder is accessible to all the users that are on this machine. Um, whereas the app data folder, which is here, see, my username on this machine is Leo W10. So you see that this is inside the users folder for this specific user and this app data on Romy. This, is, this folder belongs to the current user only. So, and under that, you have the same folder structure. You have Autodesk, um, Revit, and add-ins. Same system, just a different location. If the add-in files have been added here, 
then um, the only the current user, only this user will be able to um, load PyRabbit in their Revit. All the other users won't have won't have access to PyRabbit because they don't have these adding definition files um, in these folders, basically. Um, so that's that's the main difference between the two. As far as where the uh, where PyRabbit itself get installed, it's it's the same place. So I'm going to use it. I'm going to pick the option for all users, and I'm going to say um, see PyRabbit, and I'm going to say next, and then you just you know confirm the final uh, selections in this, and then say install. It'll copy the um, the the Git cloner basically, which is a tiny app that I've made to clone the PyRabbit repository to your machine, and, and then it starts. It runs that app and it starts cloning the repository to your machine at that location. So if while it's installing, I go to drive C and look at the PyRabbit folder, see it's being populated by information from that repository. So we'll let it finish. Okay, so the clone process has been completed. Now you have a full copy of the repository that you see on GitHub on your machine. It has everything that's in the master branch on your machine right now. So you can say finish. And then if I go to this folder that we talked about, because I choo chose the uh, option to install for all users. Um, if I go here, Autodesk. Um, Revit, let's say in 2017, you see the private add-in has been added and then it points to the right C location and it goes to the DLL that's, you know, that basically loads PyRabbit on Revit Startup. So now where these files are in these folders, now we can fire up Revit. I want to try 2017. Okay, so you get hit by this um, sort of like security prompt that says, you know, this is a new DLL. Are you sure you want to load it? Make sure you always say always load. Um, this DLL really doesn't have any, you know, code in it other than the fact that it just loads uh, PyRabbit. And then the PyRabbit Python scripts, which are in the library, they all they take care of the rest of the load process. Okay, so it's loading, finding the extensions, creating the DLLs for the extensions, and done. About seven seconds. I'm running this in a uh, virtual machine, so it's a lot slower than your actual machines. And you can see that's the new version. Oh, it went away. Um, so the okay, so the new that's how basically you install PyRabbit, and you can see that the PyRabbit tab has been um, created in Revit. Um, yeah, that's. Uh, there are a couple of other. There are a couple of other points that I've, I'll be publishing on the um, on the web blog about how to how the system administrators can install PyRabbit silently from their basically deployed from the server. Um, this this installer also allows for um, silent installs, and um, I'll do a post on this that shows how to how to use that in a sort of like a you know deployment mode.